Hey, what's up, guys? Janne Hatula here, also known as Fanu, Fat Guyver. Wanted to do a quick tutorial on breaks. That's something that people have been asking me for. So let's do a really quick run on uh, some breakbeat basics. I've got a break here. Let's take a listen. It's a very nice funky break. It's by a Finnish band called The Soul Investigators. The break is called Make It Mellow. I've been using a lot of funky type of breaks just because I like the tonality of funky drumming in general. There's uh, there's one thing or two things that I'm not super stoked about about this break. Let's uh, give it one more listen. And there's a whole lot of uh, noise, which is very great in a way, especially for hip hop. But if you want to go for a more modern type of drum and bass sound, you might want to cut that noise out a little bit. Also, there's a tambourine shaker going on all the time. I don't always want to use a shaker, a tambourine kind of thing. I usually use it to introduce energy to the song because adding high frequency content uh, rhythm wise usually adds a whole lot of energy to the song. And before I chop it, I might just give a little go with uh, I'm pulling out the trustworthy Isotope Dynamics module, which sadly it's not in. Whoops, that's the wrong one, sorry. Yeah, the Dynamics module of Ozone 5, sadly it's not included in the, con the current Ozone version in, in a way that I would like to use it for this purpose. I mean, because for this purpose I'll be using a gate. So to modern ozone dynamics module doesn't have these little bad boys down here and what they do is you're gating the signal and i want to be addressing those areas where the noise occurs the most so so yeah just to clarify what i'll i'll be doing here is because the brake has a lot of noise and the tambourine i'm trying to Cut it out a little bit. One more listen. Okay, so actually I loop it so I don't have to be triggering it all the time. Let's take uh, two bars. Right on. So First off, I want to solo the high frequency band and give it a listen. I'm pulling up the gate threshold to uh, tighten up the signal a little bit. It's easier to hear in context when you have all of them running. I'll do that soon. I'll do the same thing for, for this mid-high band as well. There's probably a little bit of boominess in the sound. Yes, yeah, so you can hear how it it gets tighter. The signal doesn't play as long, so to speak. This one as well. Yes, perfect. It gets a little bit tighter and the tambourine gets addressed a little bit. What I can do later on is I can I could multiply this, but let's do that a little bit later. I want to chop it 
in Ableton, uh, Ableton Live is pretty good at seeing where where the action happens. That is, you get the transients marked pretty nicely. I won't be touching them for now. I'll just I just want to chop it. And for me, in uh, in processing drums and doing break beats, the key is to cut each sound that the drummer has played because I want to be in control myself. It looks like they all have been marked by Ableton Live, so I'll just uh, I just do a uh, slice the new MIDI track, and I'm using Sampler. Why? I will explain that in a moment. <clears throat> okay, I'll just delete the pattern that I got because I I want to do it myself. One thing I want to do is I want to listen to the hits. All right. One thing that's been really essential for me in terms of uh, doing break beats is looping the hits. Or, well, let's say, why do you loop the hits? Well, sometimes you're going to change the playback speed of the song and you, you're going to have gaps between the hits. And not once in my life have I time stretched a break because I don't like the way that the transients get, get mushed. So what I do is I just do I've always used a reverse loop because it gives you a very natural sounding loop. So I'll do this to each hit here and uh, I'll just cut the video here and fast forward to the moment But once I'm done. All right, I'm back. I'm pretty much done with the hits. Each hit having a reverse type of loop like this. It's not necessary, I forgot to say, if you're if you're going faster than the original tempo of the break, it, you don't really have to do it because you will not be getting those gaps between hits, but we're gonna check out later how it works with if you go slower, which is nice. I'm just gonna do a basic pattern to listen to the break. I'll activate this little thing here in Ableton so I can hear the hits. Okay, so... Uh, I'll just speed it up. I'll go 165. I, I think that's a very good, very good tempo for actually retaining <clears throat> sort of a natural sort of a. Well, it just sounds good to me. You don't have to. You don't have to go 172 or 175. No matter. No matter what the big guys say. Fuck that. Okay, ghost snares, important stuff. Yeah, like the thing here, I, I need to have a, a long kick sometimes, and this would not be possible if I didn't do the reverse loop thing. Same goes for a hi-hat. It, it's basically getting stretched a little bit thanks to the loop. I'll just duplicate the loop. Maybe do this. There's something loose about one one of these one of these hits here. I think it's is a slice nine the snare. Let me see. Yeah, the the, the good old hi hat. Yeah, this sometimes people ask like, do do you use the hi hat if the hi hat comes in a little early? You can. The thing is, here. You have uh, this snare is it sounds a little delayed because the hi hat comes early, so you can use the hi hat, just nudge the midi note a little early. Yeah, so there you go. And normally, I would I would definitely chop up a longer loop, but just for the sake of the sake of brevity in this tutorial I wanna go for two bars. Because I like a lot of variety in drum drum sounds because that's one of the essential ways to keep it lively. Also try using different ghost snares. It sounds kind of funny, this one here, because it's like a roll type of thing, but... Also...
so switch switch up the hi-hats yeah what else whoops switch up the kicks not people ask me how how do you do drums and how do you have ear for drums i've never had any sort of a classical training i've never done one minute of music theory in my life i'm not saying it's bad but just how to develop your ear for rhythm such as like this one here you hear that there's something missing or not you can't do it I cannot really give you a lesson on what's wrong and what's right with breaks because you just have to listen. I've been listening to a whole lot of, whole lot of hip hop which has its roots in funk in a way and I also I'll listen to funk and the drumming and it sort of becomes apparent for you what works and what, what doesn't work. All right, here's a later edit. I just finished doing the video, gave it a watch and realized I didn't slow down the tempo to show you that the reverse loop really works. So let's do this here. You hear no gaps, none at all, and you still preserve the transients. It's punchy enough, it's good. So yeah, do the reverse loop thing, even if you slow things down and it'll sound great. Anyways, that's a very basic loop, not much to say about it, but there's one thing I was telling you about the dynamics thing that I did in the beginning. I'm trying to cut out some of the noisy stuff, probably. So I'll just try and see and try how the setting works here. I, I did that with the unchopped loop in the beginning, so let's take a listen. <laughs> Yeah, you can hear, uh, I hope you're, <clears throat> sorry, I um, hope you're using headphones because you can hear that it, it's getting tighter, it's sort of more modern because the old one, this is noisy, I know, I mean, it's cool. Like, it's very open and stuff, but with this one, it gets tighter. I could try duplicating the, the plugin. It gets even tighter. You may not like it, or you may not. I know I'm going red here. I know I shouldn't, but the signal just happens to be pretty loud. I just take this down a little bit. All right, yeah, I don't go red. Just for now, I don't care. And one thing that I that's also been sort of essential for me in processing drums these days today not 10 years ago but today is uh alloy 2 by isotope because it gives you great transient control i'm using it in multiband mode which lets you touch the transients in three different parts low mid and high oh that's going loud sorry What's great is you can actually stretch or pinch the sustain parts. You can even use it for a creative effects type of stuff. Sometimes I turn down the sustain on low end because some of the funky type of stuff have a very loose low end which doesn't always fit in very well with bass. It, this one is not very problematic but sometimes I just turn down the sustain of low end because I want it to be kind of tight. I don't want it to be messing with the bass. This one here is probably sounding a little too tight. I don't have to be using two instances of the gate, but uh, 
Anyways, one more trick that I would like to show to you is uh, in Ableton Live, if you want to touch the transients a little bit, let's do this. Ableton Live has a gate too, so there it is. What I'll do is first I'll set the threshold so that, I, that I'm only hearing the transients. I'm pretty much like this. I'm going to put it into a rack, so I'll get a chain for this. I'll duplicate the chain. So basically now I have two chains with the gate. One of them doesn't need it because I want to have a dry, whoops, sorry. I want to rename it. This will be the dry chain and this will be the gated chain. So basically what I can do here is if I want to, I can process the transients a little bit and even boost the transient parts of the signal. Got the dry one here. Got the transients. And if, if there's something that I want to do specifically to the transients, I could. I could even add, um, probably if I want to go really snappy with the transients, I know it this might be taking it a little too far, but hell, if it sounds okay, it's it's, it's right. I might use the SPL attacker on the transient chain. Yeah, I messed it up. Wrong chain, sorry. Okay, here. Here. Like it, it's, it gets super snappy. I know it sounds really stupid when you're listening to it alone like this, but. Yeah. Why am I doing this? Sometimes with old breaks, their character is super nice, but they don't necessarily cut through well enough. And you have to do something to the transients to help them push through the mix. And me, I don't do I don't do a whole lot of layering. Like you see people talk about layering drum sounds a lot. I mean, it's totally fine. I know some people do that a whole lot, but I don't. I, I usually just want to sort of retain the original character of the break, and this is something that, that really helps. I know this sounds may sound a little funny without any context, and all mixing has to be done in context. Anyways, I mean, with, with everything going on, bass, pads, and stuff, but this is something that definitely helps me sometimes to keep the original vibe of the break, but help it cut through the mix. The signal is getting a bit loud. Let's turn it down. One thing that's also been very essential to me always in music, drum and bass and breaks, has been using saturation to eat the peaks a little bit. I, I still use analog mixing desk every now and then, but when I don't, sometimes I just uh, use a saturator device to clip clip it a little bit there's a million ways to do it but even in Ableton Live you can use a saturator if you watch the peaks here I'll, I'll turn it off all right it's peaking around here if you turn the saturator on let's see the difference in sound that you can perceive it's not super crazy but it's killing some of the peaks and in modern mixing and mastering you want to clip the level, clip the peaks, so you gain more headroom. And this is something that I do. I usually turn the drive down to zero and then just put output to zero. So it's not doing anything super crazy that you could actually hear, but it's clipping the peaks. So yeah, compared to the original, I mean, I love the sound of this one too. This is without any sort of processing. And this is the end result. If you wanna go crazy. Yeah, just don't overcook it. Just be aware of the techniques, but 
don't overdo it. So yeah, that's it for now. Hope you guys liked it. If you have any questions, just let me know. I will be doing more of this stuff in the near future. And also, just to let you know, mixing and mastering is my day job. So if you need mixing or mastering, just get in touch. Check out funomusic.com slash mastering. Peace out.